scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Oh, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God
Benit dollar sign, Benita Buck, zero one. Dollar sign, B-E-N-I-T-A-B-U-C-K, zero one. Or you can say, I don't have any of that. I want to put a stamp on it. Get that 55 cent stamp and, and address it to Elwood Memorial Church, 5048 Dr. Martin Luther King, that's St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. We'll receive it that way as well. Amen. We're just grateful to God. As far as next week is concerned, remember that our services on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are Facebook Live as well as YouTube Live. That is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 6 o'clock p.m. Facebook Live and YouTube Live. On Tuesdays and Thursday is prayer at sundown. And on Wednesday, we hear the word of God from Pastor Buckner at 6 o'clock, followed by prayer. We want you all to tune in. God has done a mighty thing since the last Sunday of May. That prayer has been going forth. Hallelujah by Pastor Buckner. We're grateful to God for the prayer that has gone through. I know that prayer changes things. I know that prayer has kept me and protected me. I testified about almost getting hit by a car while my daughter and I was coming back from an appointment. God watched over and protected us and kept us from going into that meeting. And even on the other night, amen, I was coming down Lindbergh and a car cut in front of me. Glory be to God. And I thank the Lord for the type of car I had because it put on the brakes before I could even get my foot on the brake. Hallelujah. I thank God for modern technology. Amen. The car stopped for me. Glory be to God. And it was a help of the Lord. Amen. That kept me from hitting that car. I'm just grateful to God. He's been good. Hallelujah. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to sing very quickly and then you will be in the hands of our pastor. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Savior, Savior.
So God, we thank you for your goodness, and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you how you've watched over us and kept us even up until this present time. Lord, you have been so good to us, and you are yet worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor on today, Lord. It all belongs to you, and we're just grateful to you on tonight for how you've continuously watched over us, how you have blessed us, kept us from all evil, all hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, I love you today. We love you today, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you right now, Lord, for everything that you are. We're thanking you even right now, Lord, for how you are yet blessing us, how you get keeping us, oh God, in the land, they say, of the living, but we call it yet the land of the dying. Because people are dying every day. God, we just want to thank you right now. We just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all of you, all you have done for us. Thank you right now, Lord, for your hand of protection. We thank you for your hand of grace, your hand of mercy that's on us even right now. Lord, we thank you. God, we thank you right now. And we praise you right now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Lord, watch over us, oh God. Keep us, keep us, oh God, in the center of your will. Keep us, oh God, in your presence. Let no evil come upon us, oh God. And bless us even as we get ready to share, oh God, in your word. Let your word go forth, oh God, in such a way, God, that it would be a blessing, oh God, to all of those who are listening. Those here in the sanctuary. Those, oh God, who are at home watching. Those, oh God, who may be traveling and yet watching. Lord, let your word yet bless them. And we're going to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor shall be thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Let's just give God some praise right about now. I think that's a good time. Amen. For us to thank and praise God for all that he has done and all he continues to do. Amen. On today. Amen. I'm going to live so... God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so. God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so. God can use me anywhere, anytime. I'm going to live. So over things they say seen and unseen, the Lord has kept us. 
Amen. And we're just grateful for his protection and for how he continues to keep us. Amen. We're great, grateful again for wife. Amen. Carrying the service to this point. Amen. And for our Sunday school, if you didn't get a chance to look at Sunday school, amen. When this is over, go back and look at Sunday school from this morning. Amen. She did a wonderful job of bringing that lesson out. So make sure you take a look at that. Amen. We're also grateful. Amen. For the child's being with us today. God bless yeah, you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. She is. Amen. I will say she's our, our senior person here in the church. Amen. As age is concerned. Amen. But she is here with us on today. And we yeah. praise and thank God. I just say it's just something about. Amen. About just being in the service of the Lord. Amen. It's just something that you just sometimes, like I said, sometimes you can, you know, it's almost like, a, I believe it was, what did, I believe David did, but basically said sometime out that, you know, as a deer panted for the water, sometimes it's the way it comes when it comes to getting into service. Amen. You just want it so bad. Amen. You do almost anything you can to get there. Amen. That's, that's just the way that it is. Amen. I thank and praise God. As I said, that doesn't just happen overnight, amen. That comes from just years of being in service, yes. amen. And the Lord just put his feeling that within her. And so we're glad that she's here with us. Also glad for Lucas Brown being with us again, yes. sharing, amen, with his music ministry. Amen. We appreciate him, yes. amen, on today, amen, making that organ sound good, amen. Yes, amen. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Amen. We're going to share the word, man. not going to be before you long. I know it's what we say all the time, amen, but I think this time I'm actually not going to be before you very long today. Amen. Psalm 91. We're going to go to Psalm 91. Yes. On today, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. Amen. I know we have, I know many times we have gone through this, and especially in the midst of this pandemic. But the Lord put this on me again. So, I mean, amen. I'm just going to share what he has given me on today. Psalm 91. Amen. Verses 1 through 7. It says, He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High yes. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he would live with thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for terror by night nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. I went ahead and read verse number eight. Amen. But I want to look at it, verse number four. On today, amen, there's, there's, there's so much in this here, but the Lord gave me verse 4, amen, to talk on today. Verse 4 says, he shall cover thee with his feathers, uh -huh. and under his wings shalt thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and buckler. And I just want to talk today, the Lord just really placed upon me, and I would say, amen, and I'm, I'm not encouraging you to do this, amen, because there is more to this here. But one of the things the Lord shared with me when I was driving on yesterday, amen, thinking about the service on the day and thinking about even what to talk about. And the Lord said, just make sure that when you finish talking on today, that you remind the saints that they are still covered. Yes. That's what the Lord told me to talk about today, that we are still covered. Yes. Amen. Glory be to God. We are still covered. Covered. We are still protected. We are still kept. We are still covered on today. Now, you know, as I said, when I think about this, and, and you know, as I said, when I read this here, even when I was studying and reading, I remember I thought, and you know, I, I, it hasn't been long ago that I shared this before, even when the pandemic and things began to start, we kind of got somewhat into it. And I shared this even in one of the prayer and devotions about, you know, uh, from Psalm 91, because there's so much in it, amen, there's so much in it that would allow us to know that if we can just stay still, amen, God would take care of us, amen, that we have nothing to worry about, knowing that all kinds of things are going to be happening, but as saints of God, we have nothing to worry about, nothing to be concerned about. And I said, well, but the Lord said, look, yet remind the people that, amen, they are still covered. Yes, because yes. since you, since we expounded on this before, 
things have happened. Other things have happened. And the Lord began to share, even not only that things have happened, but even looking forward, when we think forward and look ahead, maybe even the next day, the next month, the next year or so, that if, you, if you look at it from the standpoint of certain things, it could give you an apprehension. It could provoke fear even within your mind and within your soul. But God doesn't desire for us to walk around fearful. He doesn't desire for us to walk around almost scared of our own shadows. But what he is saying to us on today is to let everybody know, no matter what conditions a man have been, no matter what conditions are going to be coming, that they are yet and still, we are covered. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And we know that, as I said, we live in a very much a changing world. Everything changes. Amen. Things do not stay the same. As I say, the only constant thing that we have in this world is change. Amen. You can, you can look at things today and tomorrow is going to look different. Amen. Things are just changing. We are in a very, uh, you know, I would say like this, uh, as time begins to progress and move on, amen, change begins to happen almost more rapidly than before. Before, you know, change, it looked like it would take a good while for change to take place. But now it looks like change is taking place almost every hour, especially when you look at different technology and things of that nature. That's a good place to look at. Technology changes almost overnight. You've experienced it. You went out when they have released, if you will, the latest new thing, the latest new gadget, whether it be a phone, whether it be the latest new iPad, whether it be the latest new gaming system. And you get it, and you, and you kind of get used to it. And sometimes within a month or so, they say, well, we're working on something else. Amen. They're, they're, they're always, things are always changing, always progressing in some cases. In some cases, it may not be progression, but things are just changing. But we ought to know it. We ought to understand it today and be excited about the fact that we serve a God, amen, that is a non-changing God. Amen. He is, amen, a God that is yet constant. He's yet going to be here, amen. Just like he was here for us on yesterday, he's going to be for us here on today and even on tomorrow. Amen. But he says to us, we must understand today that we are yet covered. So much continues to go on. As I said, so much goes on. Even when you look at the news, sometimes I think the newscasters can't even keep up with everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. I think many times they begin to guess, they begin to speculate and do certain things. And, and we know, as I said, if you look at it long enough, if you're not careful, if you didn't know the Lord in your life, amen, fear would certainly, amen, rear its ugly head. Amen. It seems like over and over and over that we have made progression, if you will, in certain areas in society. But when you look at the news and look at other things, you can kind of almost see when you look out sometimes your own window, look out even outside your own church door, you can see that we're kind of somewhat going in reverse, if you will, as it relates to society. You all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. But we must understand that no matter what is going on, mm -hmm. God is yet saying to us, I've got you covered. Now, we must understand there's certain things because there is a condition, amen, for us to be covered. And I believe the Lord was saying to us, as I said, now he said it very plainly. He said, tell the saints, amen, that we are still covered. Amen. We must understand that if we're going to be covered, if we're going to have this coverage from God, that we must do as the scripture says here, it, it puts a condition upon that coverage. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Amen. So therefore, he's talking about that person. And I want you to know, even though he says he, you hear me say it so many times, amen, when he talks about he, he's talking about humanity. Our God is not hung up on, you know, he's not, if you will, what they call it, there, a sexual preference or whatever, however you want to say it, amen. He's not a chauvinist, amen. In other words, amen, whatever he says, when he says he's talking about both male and female, amen. He has no preference, if you will, either way. So here he says that we must know that if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, amen, what he's really trying to say is that if you can just live with the Lord, yes. if you can just make your life, amen, a condition or a part of saying everything that I do, everything I say, I'm consulting God about. I'm living with him. I'm hearing, amen, I, I, I'm living in his will. I'm doing what he has commanded me to do. Yeah. Then it applies to you. Amen. But I want you to know that the devil, amen, he has a plan, if you will, for those of, for those of us who know the Lord. For those of us who are walking in his will. Those of us who are doing what the Lord has expressed and said for us to do. Amen. When we are doing that, the devil has a plan, amen, for you. And his plan is, if you will, to pull us back. 
Amen. Is to pull us away from the Lord. Amen. And if it can get you out of the will of God, amen. As I said, as I say, amen, he pretty much has you. That's his main plan. I said people always want to think about it, want to say stuff about, it. well, you know, uh, you know, he wants to get you to steal. He wants to get you to rob people. He wants to get you to cheat and to do all kinds of, 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 of what we would call almost big things. Well, maybe so, but I believe that's just a spinoff of what his ultimate goal is. His ultimate goal is to get you to doubt. His ultimate goal is to get you to pull away from the Lord. And the way that he does a lot that he does through fear. He will get you, amen, scared, if you will. You know, many people will look and would say, and I, I believe I would almost uh, say most of us are guilty of this, even when we look at this particular pandemic. And we think about how we have been living, amen, if you will, over the last few months. And I would surmise and say that many of us, when we first went into this, we were thinking this would probably last only just a little bit of a while. I don't think any of us thought it would last even this long. True. And even when we look at it from the child, and we kind of hear us say when you look on the, on, on the planes, if you will, and I'm saying the planes is in looking to the, what people are forecasting as people relate to this. When they're saying it may not be to sometime in 2021 or 2022 before we are really fully back. Amen. To being, amen, back to, to our, what we would call our really, really normal. Where there would be a vaccine developed and, and everybody would be able to be vaccine, vaccinated, if you will. And we'd be able to socialize a little bit better than where we are now. Many people would say, oh my God, where is your God at? Many people would have, would have said, as I said, if we had known even going in, I don't think many of us thought it would last this long. Right. I think many people went into it saying, oh, it's going to last just for maybe a month or two or, or, or a few months or whatever. And then we're going to go back to be able to do our normal thing. But we know that that's not the case. It has not gotten, if you will, any better. We continue on in the midst of this. And it looks like, as I said before, that, that and even if, that with this situation, it looks like when somebody says there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and it looks like when we run toward the light, we find out it's a freight train. Because really what it is, it's, a, it's some more bad news. As I keep saying, sometimes it's a crisis within the crisis. It's something else that is yet going on. But one thing that I'm thankful for is the fact that at least as saints of God, I can yet see us yet continuing to go on. I can yet continue to see us moving forward. I can yet continue to see the saints of God yet progressing even in the midst of this. Yeah. Even though we're not gathered together, if you will, and I said, you know, being able to have our regular services and being able to go forth as we would love to be able to do. I'm yet seeing and feeling that I believe relationships between the saints and God is being strengthened. Yeah. And I say that, that that is for a reason, because I want to let you know something. When everything is uplifted, God's going to need somebody that's going to stand up and testify and say, I went through this for this length of time. Yeah. And our God was the one who kept us. Amen. It's amazing to me, even mother, when I look and see, when they talk about how this is all about, you know, that, that it really affects the seniors. And whenever seniors get it, or, or you know, and seniors got to be so careful and, and all of this here because of this particular virus. And, and it's really much uh, taking the, the seniors home and it's taking people in there who have uh, uh, compromised, if you will, health conditions. But mother child, at, at this point in time, when I look and see you sitting over there. Having your 93rd birthday, amen, that's a testimony to the Lord that he can yet keep, amen, in the midst, amen, of a pandemic, amen, even though it may be designed, amen, specifically for your age category, God, amen, is yet able to keep you. And I just yet say to you and I'm saying to everybody else that no matter what is going on and no matter what thing the enemy may design and bring your way that may be specifically designed to take you out of here. God told me to tell you I still got you covered. That glory be to God. I'm so glad tonight, amen, that even though uh, uh, as I stand here and look upon the horizons of things, Brother Lucas, when I, you know, I, I turn the television on, and you know, we, we of the age, you know, we know God instructed us as men. We're supposed to be the ones working. We're supposed to be the ones hitting and, 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 you know, bringing and providing for our families. And when I look and see now the airline industry, it is complaining because Washington has not, if you will, released money to them to be able to operate and to function, so therefore they're having to lay off more workers. Oh my God, today, you know what say, it's getting closer, if you will, to us. When we see that, 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 those, that those things are yet happening. But I hear God yet saying to us today, Brother Lucas, he's got us covered. Oh my God, today, thank God for Jesus. I'm so glad on today. I don't have to worry about anything. Today, telling you that, that I said before, that they have talked about and saying that even 
yet working from home. Why is working from home? When we don't go back to the office, they said probably about in June or so of next year. Well, brother, it doesn't matter to me if I go back June of next year, if I go back in the office on tomorrow, all I know is God yet has me covered. Because I'm looking beyond him, as you will, the employer that employs us. I'm looking on toward him. And I heard David said, I lift my, I lift my eyes up to the hills from which cometh my help. Because my help cometh from the Lord. And no matter what goes on, if, 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 if for whatever reason, if they shut down everything, yes, if they, shut, they close everything down, let me just go here. I, I know I shouldn't talk political, but if, if Washington shuts everything down, great God from on high, I got news for you. There's going to be a group of people who are yet going to be surviving, a group of people who are yet covered. And that group is called the saints of God. God has promised that he's going to cover us no matter what is going on. So therefore, he says to us that even though the devil would invoke fear upon us, he will try to send fear. Oh my God, yes he will. He'll use every mechanism to bring fear about you. But he said, I want you to know that even though terror comes, maybe terrorists that may be coming over, over here, may be doing things within our lives, God is yet saying to us, I've got you covered. So you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to worry about even in the daytime. Because you know people are something. We talk about these drive-by shootings. We talk about homicide in the city and how it continues to go up and look like it's not going down. They try everything. But what I told them, the, the, the thing they really need to do is stop trying to figure it out on their own and get down on their knees and cry out to God and say, Lord, help us with this situation. But even though homicides are yet going up, people are getting bold now. They'll shoot you in broad daylight. But God is yet saying to us not to worry. I've got your hand. Don't you worry. I've got you covered. And one thing I've learned to take it on a little bit further because somebody might say, well, a preacher, you just don't know because death has come and separate the soul from the body of one of my loved ones, of one of my dear friends. But I want you to know that even death can yet come and take us. But I want you to understand that God is yet saying that I yet have you covered. Because later on down the line, even beyond Psalm, over the New Testament, God said, let me just show you that I really got you covered. And he sent forth, when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, his son by the name of Jesus. And Jesus came to fulfill this scripture, to let us know we were covered. And I want you to know that he went to Calvary to cover us up. He went to Calvary and he died for our sin. He died so that we could be covered even in the midst of death. Because after he had, after he had got to Calvary and when they had buried him down in the grave, put him in the tomb, and while he was in the tomb, my God today, he went on down there and said, I've got to make sure that my sins are covered. I've got to make sure that my brothers and sisters will yet be covered. So he went on down there. He went down to hell. Yes, he did. Got down there in the spirit realm. And as someone said, he ran him a free day revival. Got down there and showed himself to these prophets who had been here before him and death had taken them and he began to share with them and he began to show them that he they were prophesying about had yet made his arrival on the scene and the third day came and he said I got to close the revival out I got to get back to glory I got to get out of here and I got to fulfill the scripture I got to make sure the saints know that they have been covered. So he said, on my way out of here, he reached back and he saw the devil. The devil had some keys there. He had some keys jangling. And Jesus reached over to the devil and snatched 
out the keys, the keys of hell. Yes, he did. And he got on out the grave. And he looked back at that grave and said, Oh, there, where is your stand? Grave, where is your victory? I want you to know I've got the keys now. I've got the keys of hell. I've got the keys of death. And I want you to know as saints of God, when he got ready to get out, I believe when he ascended up, I believe somebody heard those keys yet jangling. Let me know that God yet had us covered. Yes, he did. He had the keys over death. Yes, he does. So I'm yet covered. And I'm thanking God as I get ready to close. I got to close this out because somebody is saying, preacher, that sounds good. It's good to know that we are covered. But God, on Friday morning, this past Friday, God said, I want to demonstrate to you just how covered you are. Thank you, Jesus. I prayed on Thursday night, doing Thursday night prayer, and I closed the prayer out, and I said, Lord, keep us covered. Lord, keep protecting us. I went on the bed. I said, Lord, even now, as I go to sleep, let us have a restful night of sleep, and I want you to know that on Friday night, terror began to rain. Oh, y'all better help me here. Yeah. It was Thursday night, I'm sorry, Thursday night. Terror began to rain. Here on Martin Luther King Drive, two doors down the road. Yes, Lord. And it began to get, it began to go. During the night, fire began to rain. Two doors down from the church. Thank you, Jesus. And somebody called me. At 5 o'clock on Friday morning, Brother Lucas, I was in sleep, didn't ask the phone. Got to be about 10 o'clock. I looked down at my phone and saw somebody had called. They had called to tell me that they saw on the news that there was a building on fire down there by your church. I was just calling to see, was your church on fire? Is your church all right? Thank you, Jesus. I didn't even think about it. I picked up the phone. I called my deacon. Matter of fact, deacon was already, had already made his way down here. Was already in the church at 10.30 in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. I called him. I said, Brother Deacon, I just want to know, is everything all right? He said, well, Pastor, I want you to know it was about 4 o'clock in the morning. He said, I woke up to go to the restroom. I only live up next door to the church. And I looked down the street. I saw fire engines all up and down the street. Fire trucks in front of the church. Thank God for Jesus. Fire was yet rolling down the street. He said, they were putting the fire out. He said, I looked down there and saw the church was all right. I went on back to bed. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I'm up now just trying to survey and see what's going on down the street. And I just want to tell you that God, I had to get up that line. I had to thank him, man, brother. I had to give God some praise. And so then I got out there, got on Facebook, and I made a post, and I began to post it and to talk about how I talk about what had happened because people were yet concerned. And my daughter was there. And she said, Daddy, how do you want to post this here? we got to put a title on it. What do you want to say? I said, say it like this. All is well. And the old woman. God had us covered. God protected us in the middle of the night. And I just want to tell you, on today, we may be going through, you might be going through, a night season. Terror may be happening on either side of you, but on today, God is yet proclaiming, I have you covered. I've got you covered. Fire may happen next door to you, but it's not going to damage you. You are covered even now. You are to give God praise and say, I thank God that I am covered. I'm covered. I'm covered by the blood. Lucas, friends may, things may happen in the 
coverage even beyond death. And I thank you for that coverage today. Thank you that we are covered. And Lord, you love us so much. That's why you cover us. But you won't let any evil or anything befall us. And you even further stated to God that even sometimes when wartime comes, that you said our trust in you would allow us to even receive and to win the battle. And so I'm thanking you even right now, God. That's why we trust in you. Because we know with our trust in you, we cannot lose if we get trust in you. So Lord, we thank you for that trust on today. God, I pray you yet encourage your saints on today. Encourage that person, oh God, who is yet wondering. Oh my God, wondering. I've been this for a long time. Wondering. Are you really with them? Lord, show them. Let them know even today that they are covered. They are covered even right now. Oh my God, they're covered, oh God, by your wings, oh God. You're keeping them protected, even as a hen protects her little babies. You're protecting us on today. And so we thank you for it, God. And we glorify you. And we accept your coverage, God. We accept, oh God, whatever way that you would have us to go, we accept it on today. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you, amen, are saying, I want that coverage, Pastor, I want that coverage, you can receive it. It's open to anyone. Amen. Our God has an open policy. Amen. You don't have to wait, if you will, for enrollment season. Amen. His enrollment season, amen, he opened that up when he went to Calvary. When he died, he opened it up. Matter of fact, when he was here, he said, come unto me, all your labor, and I will give you rest. That's what he said. That's, when the, that's if you will, when the policy was opened. At that point in time, and you can accept him even now. He left it on record that if you can just confess with your mouth, the Lord just believe in your heart. God raised him from the dead that you should be you could be saved, you could be covered, even now. That's you. Just lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I want that coverage over my life and over my soul. I believe today that God sent you to die on the cross for my sins. I further believe that God raised you from the dead for my justification. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins and make me over again. Lord, I accept you right now as my Lord and as my Savior. If that's what you pray, you pray today. Just begin to thank him and give him praise even now. Thank you for the coverage that you have over your life right now. Let him know that you, amen, have accepted him. Amen. And give him praise and glory even now. Amen. Glory be to God. And we thank you again for tuning in with us on today. Amen. We pray that you would have a wonderful, wonderful day and wonderful uh, week upcoming. At this time, Missionary Buckner is coming. Amen. With our closing.